Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Betty True and welcome to Kentucky Route Zero because it's January now, meaning, like, you know, for the most part, nothing's going to come out for the next two months or so. So, this is a good time for me to do something I enjoy doing at the start of every new year, which is go over everybody else's game of the year list because sometimes I find a bunch of games that I've not played that might turn out to be absolute flipping stars. So I'm going to see if I can catch up on some of like, you know, the big important games of 2020 that I missed at the time. And uh, this one, Kentucky Route Zero, was on a lot of people's lists. Though, uh, to be honest, putting it on a 2020 list is... Uh, Okay, so this game's got a bit of a story to it, which is uh, the reason we probably haven't been looking at it on Many a True Nerd is uh, it predates Many a True Nerd. Uh, you can see there, there's five episodes and a few little kind of uh, mini episodes uh, between episodes. The first one came out at the beginning of 2013. Then the second one took them a few months to make. Then it took them a year to make the third one, two years to make the fourth, then four years to make the final one that only just came out. So uh, this game's been like coming out very slowly or rather exponentially more slowly with each episode for the past flipping seven odd years. But for those who have been keeping up with it, well, they very often got nothing but good things to say. I saw this showing up on a fair few people's games of the year list. So uh, as it's conveniently split up into, you know, nice chapters anyway, we're going to go and do act one today because I'm not a hundred percent sure what this is. It seems to be some sort of like narrative Americana point and click thing. So, okay, let's see what we flipping got here. Equus oil, so, uh, fine. Latin for horse, aha! My degree is useful for something, just in case, you know, like, you know, once or twice every year. And... Okay, is that going to be by any chance? That's a bloody horse! All right, flipping called it. There you go, my degree wasn't a complete waste of time and money. So, okay. We're in America presumably Kentucky, and I am, I am presumably this guy. So, okay, we, ooh. Am I playing horseshoes? I don't think I'm really playing horseshoes. I think I navigate the world by playing horseshoes in my brain, though. Oh, it's not actually side on properly. It's kind of like, it's sort of 3D. Okay, most important thing of all, apparently I've got a donk. An old hound in a straw hat. Both have seen better days. How dare you? He's still a very good dog, whoever he is or whatever he's here. Not that this is my dog. Hopefully this is my dog. He seems to be sort of... Uh, is he following me? Okay, hopefully this is my dog and not the petrol station's dog. No! Americana. This isn't a petrol station. It's a gas station. Even though there's no gas. And I know, like, you know, gasoline. But seriously, don't abbreviate gasoline to gas when the thing you're abbreviating it to implies it's in a different state than what it is. That always annoys me. All right, Americans, sort it out. And I also seem to have, yes, a very old uh, truck here. So uh, a moving truck rumbles softly to itself, painted on its sides with the words, uh, Lysets Antiques, Furniture, Glassware, Curiosities. Okay. Well, I'm driving the truck, so I'm assuming I'm... Uh, Lysette, and okay, we've got an attendant, so I assume I can look at him or speak to him. All right, get the lay of the land. Joseph sits between gas pumps in a Queen Anne armchair. His hair is grey, his glasses darkened. Okay, I assume that, well, my character doesn't know that. Like, am I playing the role of, like, the narrator rather than the character? Because uh, having not spoken to him... I'd have no way of knowing, well, unless, like, you know, I came here to meet him. I kind of assumed I was here to, you know, get some oil and or gas that's not a gas. But given I'm, like, you know, throwing horseshoes uh, that just lead this guy, maybe I'm playing the role of the narrator that's just kind of, like, you know, controlling his life or something. So, okay, we need to go and have a chat to this guy who I already know who it is, apparently. So maybe I'm here to, like, you know, meet him. So, damn, did you hear that wreck? Truck full of bottles, I don't know, beer bottles, whiskey, lost a tyre or something and spilled booze and glass all over the interstate. Well, I don't know what's going on, but like in the background the traffic seems to be, you know, going along perfectly well. So I'm not sure what you're on about, mate. What a mess, I hope they don't come down here looking for anything. We blew a damn fuse and it's all shut off. Okay, well, honestly, like, I might also need some gas, but apparently that's not going to be like, um, an option. Did I hear a dog? What's your dog's name? His dog is Homer. 
His dog is blue. Just some dog. I don't know his name. No, that's mean. But okay, his... Is my dog blue? Is he like, you know, one of those blue cats but a dog? My dog's name's gonna be blue for some reason. So... Also, apparently my dog's a she. Sorry, didn't realise that because my dog's kind of like, you know, a silhouette. Uh, so, uh, Blue sounds like a sweet old hound. Uh, I used to know a dog like that. Okay, I like you because you seem to like my dog. Me and you can be friends. By the way, do you have any idea what's going on and, uh, like, you know, why I'm here? Oh my goodness, I've got some jerky. Lovely. So, didn't turn out too well. I better dog eat it. Okay, do not just give my dog the cast-offs, please. I want my dog to have proper food, damn it. So what's, um, uh, what's actually going on here? So, uh, okay, apparently I'm looking for something. I'm looking for five Dogwood Drive. Okay, got delivery to make on Dogwood. Uh, I'd rather watch the sunset. Okay, well, if it's getting late, and like, you know, we're in the middle of nowhere, there's not going to be, like, streetlights. So, to be honest, we should probably try and get there wherever we're going before, like, you know, the light fades. So, yes, if you could provide, like, directions, that's presumably why I'm here. So, uh, maybe get some rest somewhere in there, maybe have a drink, then back at it. There's dignity in that rhythm. So, uh, where is it? Or how long have you been working here? Or what's your rhythm like? Okay, let's not just ask him. Let's be, like, you know, a bit friendly. Because I don't know whether we're, like, you know, playing by episodic narrative rules where so-and-so will remember that. It could well be. So we're going to be nice before we demand answers. I've been working here a number of years. It's pretty okay. You know, I have an advanced degree in a few publications. It's pretty okay here. Okay, so, yeah, from, like, I don't know, the vague hint of a collar, the blaze of the glass. I suppose we're supposed to read this guy as, like, you know... Potentially someone who's uh, fallen on uh, hard times. And now just sort of uh, works out here. You and Blue would have been driving up and down 65 all night. Dogwood Drive is on the other side of... Uh, well, to get there, you've got to take the zero. Okay, so... Right, we're skipping straight to the zero. Whatever that is. Though, I kind of noticed... I don't know whether this is like a visual bug, but... The zero seems to be sort of... Uh, yes, doing a bit of wibbling that like the other words aren't which is mildly concerning no no it's definitely doing it so okay the zero sort of wibbles and isn't really there so i'm guessing it's actually going to be a road that's not really properly there so a tough route to find you can use my computer to look up directions you have to head down into the basement reset the circuit breaker so now i can have aha that's the lamp he had on right there so i may as well just uh have that on all right down we flip and go and Ooh, that's a nice transition, and that's a weirdly long spiral staircase. And also, oh, this is, this is a gas station. Um, should I be concerned by, you didn't mention there were three guys down over here. I can also just leave myself in darkness if I want to. Um, hi, you're basement people. Maybe I know your names if I just look at you again. So, Emily, Ben, and Bob. Sit in folding chairs behind a worn card table. Papers, oddly shaped dice, and highway maps cover the tabletop. Okay. By any chance, are you guys trying to find Route Zero as well? Because uh, I'm so suspicious of, of that guy. Am I trapped in this guy's basement now? Okay, Blue, if anything happens to me, you flipping go for this guy's neck, alright? Have his bloody throat out. Well, I may as well talk to them. Maybe they can point me towards, you know, the circuit breaker. Because I can't help but notice that they seem to be, you know, just sort of sitting in darkness right now. So have you all seen a breaker box down here? Sorry, didn't know there was anyone down here. Yeah, let's see if we can, you know, figure out who these people are precisely. Did you hear something? Okay, either they're ghosts or they're just really damn rude. Look, you said you rolled a five, right? That means you get to pick up your marker and move it anywhere on the map. Okay, so they're playing... They're playing a game. Which, given it seems to involve trying to find something on a highway map, suggests... Okay, are they doing a metaphor for what I'm really doing? Because this might be the sort of game with metaphors. Although possibly instead we've got a weird ghost mission because... Uh, okay, 20-sided die. I don't see it. Did you drop it? Should be easy enough to find... Uh, it glows in. Aha! It glows in the dark. Okay, simple puzzle here. Turn this off and... Okay, well it's not here. But if I go 
down a bit and then just try and aha there we go just move over in that direction check the sign by the way and a dusty rusty sign well what does it say these are the rules Number one, no open flames near gasoline, no consumption of beer on the premises, and in case of sudden darkness, do not panic, relax, count backwards from five, strictly limit time in the basement to fewer than three minutes of every hour. Ah, I'm guessing fumes or something. Okay, well, I know there's this thing here. So go towards that. There we go. I've got that. The number five is facing up, so... Wait. How did they know they'd rolled a five if the dice is... Okay, I think this game's just going to be weird. It's just going to be one of those weird games where things are weird. I don't know where the circuit breaker is, so... Okay, may as well go and, you know... Oh. Okay, yes, things are just going to be weird. Got it. And uh, keep it or put it on the table. No, because they said... Uh, a five means you can go wherever you want on the map. Now, I want to go somewhere obscure that's hard to get to on the map. Therefore, I want to roll a five. So, if I place my five on the table, then as a result of that... Could I always have gone this way? I might have always been able to go this way. I'm not sure. So, okay. Breaker. Just need to do that. And there we go. We're now golden. So there's... Is that a cello? There does appear to be a cello here. I can't go down there. I can't go down here. I mean, okay. He said I could now use his computer. And presumably that's up here. Just check this guy hasn't, like, you know, gone bananas or killed my dog or whatever. And it's now... Aha! Time has passed. So I've kind of missed my opportunity to get there before, uh, before dark. Okay, there's the... Wait, where's your... Where's your computer? Hang on, there's not the computer. That looks like a computer, but I can't quite um, click on it. Okay, maybe you need to give me a password or something, my friends. Now, do I tell him about the ghost people, or... Yeah, I'm curious whether you know about the ghost people. So, in the basement? No, I don't think so. Maybe that lamp light was playing tricks on you. Okay, this is... Uh, this is odd. Strange things happen underground, especially in the dark. And he doesn't know the password because he just types it in via muscle memory. Okay, but I'm looking for whoever this is. Okay, I don't know who that is, but fine. It's kind of long, kind of like a short poem, I think. One of those short poems that really sums it all up. You'll figure it out. Okay, computer. Where the password is kind of long, but also kind of like a, a short poem. Okay, so Conway. No, because I'm not going to be a user. So type Joseph. Password. Typing. Wheels slide loose. The stars drop away. I talk and listen to him talking. He said something that sort of sums it all up. So am I defining my character's outlook on life right now? Because this is whatever my character considers sums it all up so uh, I talk and listen to him talking is uh, that's like you know the most realistic practical take on the situation which is I'm talking he's talking I listen to him alternatively uh, these are much more you know poetic so uh, he said it was like short poetry he was talking about yeah the um uh, the sunset earlier so uh, yeah the stars drop away and he was saying aha he was saying he'd fallen on hard times, so uh, wheels slide loose or stars drop away uh, could suit that. Let's go for stars drop away. And uh, nobody saw the accident. The moon throbs. It's late. Hmm. Well, I guess it would be late if the stars were dropping away. You just breathe road. The lights whine. It will only get later. Yes, we'll make that a follow-up. Password accepted. I just invented a poem that's not really a poem, but like the password's accepted, which is fascinating. Okay, this is this is going to be a weird game. Got it. So 
messages, uh, address book. Ooh, games! Yes, let's have a game. That sounds fun. Games is not real. May as well check messages first. We were looking for Donald at hotmuck.mail. Okay, message to from accounts. Okay, I'm guessing that's going to be bad news for this station. Like, this station's in debt or something. So, alright. Account standing. Oh, yeah, this is going to be bad news. Urgent automated message. Your account is overdue by more than 14 days. In response, we've switched you to our low reliability Dirty Power Plus plan. I'm assuming that's bad for some reason. Meanwhile, the other message from Donald is... Okay. I know it's been a while, you're still sore. There's a whole world in here and we need your help to unmask it. Yes, the caves are cold and we are old and lame. Never mind, I can't remember why I even started writing this. I miss those days in the lab with you and our dear Lula. Maybe you found your own Xanadu. Well, so have I. Okay, so yeah, this guy was saying he'd kind of fallen from grace a bit. Apparently it's something to do with... Uh, a mysterious cave system I'm guessing we're about to go and locate. So here we go. He was saying we need to go and find this woman. Uh, I'm going to settle on Marquez and we're just going to go for it and hope I'm at least, you know, halfway to right. Now the Zero's definitely not going to return anything. Yeah, that's not real either. Okay, we need more, you know, practical directions uh, from Marquez. So, uh, okay. 100 Macondo Lane. Head northeast on 65. Turn left as soon as you see that ugly tree that's always on fire. Okay, well, a tree can't always be... You know what? It's probably always on fire. This is going to be a weird game. I get it. While you're down there, I'll load that old TV of mine onto your truck. I borrowed that thing from Weaver Marquez a number of years ago. And now the power's all weird over here. I can't pick up anything but static and public access. Anyway, she was always more of a reader. Maybe she'd want it back at home. It's a nice TV. Okay, so I'm guessing we're just doing an extra delivery. Anything you've got to say on, you know, uh, the way out, my friend? Sun's gone down, you and Blue better get on that road. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure I'm keen on, you know, uh, going out in a ramshackle old truck in the dark on a back street that doesn't appear to have any lights on it, but I guess we do. Still, we can speak to Blue. This is the important thing. That's right, you give him a scratch, damn it. Ooh, and I've actually got a flipping lead. Oh, hang on. Oh, I'm actually, oh bloody hell, I'm actually in control of the map. Oh, that's a concern. Okay, it said uh, northeast on the 65. Right, I'm actually having to follow instructions. So then I need to find uh, Macondo. The problem is, I don't know which of these is going to be Macondo. Now, they said take a left at, like, you know, a, a tree. Like, that's what we need to do. Turn left as soon as you see that ugly tree that's always on fire. So I'm guessing the game will, like, tell me when I see an ugly tree. And I can only do that when there's... all oh, Burning tree. Well, okay. We've got ourselves a burning tree. So, uh, right. They were right. So now I just head in this direction. And, uh, okay. These lines will indicate uh, topography. So it's got to be somewhere around... There we go. Went a bit far, actually. Okay, so we're actually doing flipping map reading. That's kind of cool. Okay, so uh, what have we got here? We're in the middle of flipping nowhere. I could start driving in if I wanted to. So uh, I'm guessing maybe if you just know the way, you can go straight to the zero. But I don't know the actual way to go, so uh, I'd have no way to find it. Now, just make sure Blue's okay. He's not, like, you know, scared of the dark or anything. Maybe you better... Oh! Something just passed the camera, and I don't like that. Have I been tricked into playing a horror game of some description? Yeah, I'll try and borrow you a treat. Okay, I'll try and get you... Uh-oh. I'm leaving my dog. Down here, where it's dark. Well, kind of dark. And something just passed in front of the... If they kill the dog, that's it. I'm turning off the game. I'm not having this. Okay, stay in the light, girl. Stay in the flipping light. Please do not get eaten by the weird-ass monster that, you know, just walked in front of uh, the camera there. And... Oh, that's cute. House comes into uh, view at the back. Okay, so we're just going up the path. There's 
There's graves here. Good. Good, good, good. That's always good when you go out into the middle of nowhere when it's dark and leave your dog alone and there's just a graveyard right here. So, okay, Nowakowski, Padilla, Marquez. All right, not sure what's going on here, but also there's some weird, like, you know, extra dimensional trees going on. Might be the art style, might be wibbles from another dimension. Can't be sure. Oh, yes, of course, we're delivering them, um, a television. Though he did say she was, you know, more of a reader and the door just opened by itself. I'm not appreciating any of this, by the way. Okay, well, that's... that's good. Weaver, I was just thinking, what a lovely house we have. Do you like it? Have you been here before? Did you happen to see an owl? Okay. Um, you're very relaxed about the fact that you live on your own in the middle of nowhere, and like, you know, a guy you've never met before just let himself into your house. I was looking for Marquez, wasn't I? Okay, possibly there's someone else downstairs. Okay, still, I would have thought she'd be a bit freaked out by this whole situation. So, uh, no, I've never been here before. I know, uh, it must seem very strange to you. I was here when this house was built, so it's never been strange to me. Do you mean the weird extra-dimensional tree? Because you might mean that. There used to be another house here. We had it destroyed. We built this one. That's an odd thing to do out in the middle of nowhere. Like, you've got no shortage of space. Why not just, you know, build your house nearby? There's nothing around here. It's, like, empty. Huge amounts of empty space. So, uh, why destroy uh, the old house? Okay. What do you do for work? Is it too difficult? Do you like it very much? I was once a mathematician. Are you looking for something in particular here? Gonna be honest, I'm just... I'm just here to deliver a TV and get directions. But everyone's like, you know, very keen to spill their life story at me. So, I mean, okay. Maybe I need to, like, you know, make up my own backstory so I can fit in better. Like, you know, just kick the door down of a nearby house, walk in and say, I am very sad for I used to be a rocket scientist, but sadly, no, now I deliver televisions. By the way, here's a television. Uh, maybe I'll fit in more around here if I do that. So, okay. I'm looking for the zero. No, let's, you know, engage her in small talk first. So, uh, yeah, small antique shop. I'm guessing it's hard time for a small shop. It's hard times everywhere, even out here on our little farm. I'm guessing it's especially hard out here on a farm, but uh, what can you do, eh? My parents stopped paying the bank a while back. I shouldn't even be here, but I just stayed. Oh, so you're basically like, you know, squatting in a house no one could be bothered to, to repossess. Well, you probably shouldn't have demolished the old house to build this one then, should you? You'd probably be in less debt if you hadn't done that. I've got a TV for you, Weaver. Will you please set it up, then I can explain to you how to get where you're going. I haven't actually said the... Okay, everyone's weird. Might be some form of weird, like, you know, hive mind going on. Also, do I know how to set up an old TV? Because, you know, I'm a delivery driver. I'm not actually a TV installation man, though. Okay, um, the TV just sort of opened up a different dimension. This is, is this normal? Does your house normally do this? Because your house just sort of, a bit of the house fell off the house. Like, is, is this like a thing that usually happens? That's not how it's supposed to look. You've made a mistake setting it up. Okay, this is not my fault. All right, the fault is with your walls, not my TV. And by the way, not my TV, all right? If your house has just gone back in time or whatever, that is Joseph's fault, not mine, not my television. I feel like I'm getting it over my head here. I just want to find the bloody zero for some reason. Okay, look at the TV is what she wants me to do. And, well, no, no, that's not the, you're so bad at this Conway, that's not the TV, that's some horses over there. But then I guess they are quite pretty horses. Also, there's a swirl. Okay. You spaced out for a second there. Yes. Um, I appear to be not paying attention to the TV. What's going on in the weird coat barn in your backyard? Which I can see, which means presumably, yes, the walls of your house have just sort of fallen off. Used to be tools and feed, then books. Now I think it's mostly spiders. What's the weird swirl pattern mean? That TV's picking up the wrong signal. My cousin Shannon would know about it. She fixes TVs for a living. Well, she used to. Now the new models are giving us some trouble. Okay. 
Um, should I go meet your sister to sort out your TV problems? I mean, uh, that feels like a good thing to do. Maybe she could tell you about the Zero then again. Maybe she just ask about the Zero. Look, I've delivered the TV. Any chance you're just going to tell me Shannon might know, but you don't? I'm not convinced you should bother with the Zero. I'd much rather you just found my cousin and fixed him a TV. But I'll get your head the right way. Okay, so you can point me in the right direction, but not all the way. Get back on the 65, head north, take the first right after the artificial limb factory. From there, your arrival at the zero is basically inevitable. Okay, well that seems fairly simple, in which case, do I need Shannon? Keep your eyes open, especially in the- Yes, I'm aware my dog's been eaten, alright? It was very clearly foreshadowed. Oh, I'm not sure she exists anymore, by the way. I feel like, um, that woman might just sort of, uh, not exist. Does she exist? Does anyone exist? If we went back to the gas station, I'm just going to assume Joseph doesn't exist. Right, I just think nobody exists right now. Is the light off? There's... There's music. There's music that wasn't there. I don't know if it's third-party music and... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what the... What the... Okay, that's less threatening than I thought. Though, are those the same instruments I saw, like, in the... In the gas station... This is, actually, this is more creepy than finding my dog's corpse. Because now there's just three people rocking out on guitars under some ruins on the far side of the valley. And that is actually creepier than, like, what we already had. So there are some horses behind the house. You're not in any way suspicious of the weird rocking out people who are serenading you at 3am in the middle of nowhere in rural America, because I feel like that's actually odder than the fact there are some horses in a field. Okay, seriously, back on the 65 as fast as you like, please. Uh, so, look for artificial limb factory. So, if we just keep going north, we'll run to that sooner or later. That's a factory. Okay, edge of the building's parking lot, a large sign, partly obscured by trees, reads, uh, artificial limb, good. Okay, so we were supposed to uh, turn right there. Weren't we? So take the first right. It then splits in various directions. I mean, there's a weird path here. Do you want to follow the weird path? I can't follow the weird path. Well, there's an on-ramp. I mean, if there's an on-ramp that doesn't go anywhere, that strikes me as, you know, a good candidate for getting to the mystery road that doesn't exist. Yeah, let's give that a go. Act 1, Scene 3. I will see. I see the problem. It's a mysterious extra-dimensional doom on ramp, and also it doesn't actually have, like, you know, uh, any way to, to get up. Though, I'm kind of going into... Okay, apparently I'm stepping into extra-dimensional darkness right now. That's just what we're doing. So, okay. I need to find a way to lower that ramp, and... Right! So now we're in Tag to on scene four. Uh, that was... That was sooner than I was expecting. Now, now Shannon... Okay, so that's, um, oh, what was the other woman? Weaver! This is Weaver's sister, cousin. I forget. Uh, but okay, this is a TV repair person who repairs old TVs, uh, but doesn't know how to fix, like, new TVs. Which is a shame, because I don't know exactly when this is set, but presumably the old TVs are being phased out in favour of, you know, the new TVs. So uh, her job is rapidly becoming uh, obsolete. So, you know, that's not going to be a good position to be in. So, okay, add another person to the pile of, I used to have a good job, then time happened, and now I have a really bad job, or, like, no job at all or something. So, okay, large brick cell phone. Ah, that maybe dates us to, like, the 80s or something. So, okay, $200 for two weeks, kind of an emergency. It's fine, I'll figure it out. I don't know who I'm speaking to, so... Okay, if this is about, like, money, then maybe it's an emergency. So... Okay, whatever she's doing, I can't hear it. So, yeah, I'm kind of playing as, like, the narrator who's nudging her, not her. Because I'm not privy to the information that she is gaining access to. Now we have got... Oh, that's... That's me, because that's my dog. I'm going to be honest, I recognised the dog before I recognised myself there. Um... So now I'm meeting myself as a different myself. Excuse me, I saw the light was on. I'm looking for the on-ramp to... Uh, are you here to kick me off the property? Do you believe in ghosts? Um... 
I mean, both of those are weird things to say to a guy who just, you know, opened with, excuse me, I saw some lights on, I'm looking for something. Like, if you'd interrupted earlier, these would be more reasonable, you know, things to say. Not the last one, that one's just weird. But, um, yeah, like, am I worried that you're here to evict me for some reason? No, 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 I guess you don't belong here either, and you work for the power company... Ah, there was an email from the power company, the first guy. So maybe the power company is the big bad as it turns out. So uh, in which case, yes, I just need to go and find uh, the water company and then we will make them fight to the death. It's going to be marvellous. That's how we end it with a great big power versus water mecha battle. I'm assuming that's not how the game actually ends. Yes, do you know where the zero is? So Weaver Marquez, she sent me this way. So here I am. Uncommon kind of place for an on-ramp. That's what it's been like so far. And uh, yeah, I'm guessing she's dead. Is she dead by any chance? You saw her tonight and no weaver she was. Yeah, she's super dead. And uh, you're the one who fixes televisions. Got it. Yes, we know that. Did she tell you that too? Of course she did. Ah, that confirms uh, that it was real. Because if she's able to verify that information, I have no way of knowing that information as I actually spoke to her. So at the bare minimum, Shannon's not going to think I'm crazy. Because somehow, I did know that information. Okay, so now I'm back in control of Conway, even though I wasn't a second ago. And hang on, this sign. Uh, no work tomorrow. But the end's backwards, so I'm not sure who, who wrote that. Okay, we're just... We're just going into the old mine, are we? Because, I mean, I'm looking for a flipping on-ramp to, like, you know, a road. I don't think I'm going to find it in a mine, but whatever. So this runs into the mine's PA system. Do you think it works? We can check or the light of it's off. Yeah, but that could be, a, you know, an electrical fault in the light. Best to actually, you know, test it. All right, give it a whirl. Is anyone down there? And uh, yes, check if it's, like, you know, occupied. Nothing. Okay, no power. Even when the mine was up and running, it was tricky to keep stuff powered. Yeah, power company again. Okay, the power company's 100% the big bad. Gotcha. So they used to have to pay just to run fans and lights. Well, yeah. I mean, you do have to pay for electricity. Like, I don't think the power company are the bad guys for asking for money in return for electricity. Oh, right, yes, okay. So they were paid in plastic tokens, uh, scrip, and they needed to spend them uh, just to run the fans. Okay, so yes, it's definitely the people who are the managers of the mine who are the bad guys here, gotcha. So if we could actually, like, you know, find one of those plastic tokens, presumably, or free up some power for the PA system. Why do we need the PA system? I feel like, you know, the fans are more important just in case things have got a bit, you know... Not oxygenated down there or something. So everything's rationed. Uh, here, set up that lamp of yours. Uh, I'll go unplug the ceiling lights. Ah! Are we doing some form of, like, um, uh, managing power? And uh, fidgets with change. Yes, just, you know, do something to distract yourself. Okay, so there's limited power. If I want one system to work, I might need to unpower another. Begin speaking. And I hear you. So, uh, just breathe... Uh, I'll measure the resonance of your breath with the air in the tunnels. Uh, just try and relax. That doesn't sound like science, but okay. Yeah, think about uh, resting to relax. So, remembers a moment earlier in the day. No, 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 don't think about earlier in the day. This day's been bloody weird. All right, remember a day that's not today. Getting some strong readings here. I think we're in good shape, but keep at it for a minute. So, hot meal. Or cold drink. I imagine a hot meal would be nice. Like, you know, it's uh, it's night right now in the middle of nowhere. It's probably pretty cold. So, okay. And, ooh, a peel of feedback. And a loose rock engulfs him. Right, well, Conway's dead. That's a shame. Um, like, have I just been hit by a flipping cave-in because of a bit of feedback? Because if that happened that easily, we should definitely not be going... Can we go back to scene three, by the way? Because I feel like I might have missed something in scene three. Um, okay. I mean, I'm guessing now Conway's dead. We're just with Shannon. She's going to take over the, um, the delivery. And hopefully Blue. Please feed Blue. Are you alright? What the hell? I'm okay. My leg's stuck. Okay, this happened in the first room of the mine. We should not be going into this mine. 
You're just pushing me deeper into the mine, aren't you? Yes, yes you are. Okay, now that, that's not cool, Shannon. Oh, we're trapped in here, are we? Oh, good, I'm so glad I came into this bloody mine. So, uh, right, we need to find one of the other exits. If there are any, I think there are. Okay, yes, what about this weird uh, on-ramp thing? We'll find the exit. Yeah, good call. Cool. Find the exit first, then we'll see what's coming up uh, next. So, okay, let's get moving. I'm on this weird rumbly thing, and apparently I'm in control. And, oh! Okay, apparently now my lantern's making... My lantern's making a weird noise. Is that a concern? Because I feel like that's a concern. So, okay. We're just moving on down the tunnel. And, like, you know, hopefully finding something eventually. If I just turn this off. Then, oh, Oh, that's creepier. Oh, I don't like that. No, let's not do that. That's a canoe. I'm not sure there should be a canoe here. Then in the dark. I don't like being in the dark down here. But I feel like, you know, I should do on occasion. Oh, there's a turntable. Here we are. This may be hard to believe. It's hard for me to believe myself. This whole branch was underwater last I heard. Well, I can see a canoe. And also, is that a scarecrow? In a mine? Okay, this is, this is all very peculiar. So some careless miner or some unattended machine bored through into an underground lake. Okay, a lot of folks got trapped in the tunnels. Only heard parts of how it went from there. Sanitised for the bereaved. You know how these big companies are. Yes, I can definitely believe that the Mindscript company are bastards. Fair enough. So, okay, they couldn't get the pumps working. The power was rationed. So they shut the lights off. Even then, it wasn't enough. And doesn't matter. Look. This old turntable is still wired up. The controls are dead, but I can use my signal generator to switch tracks if the water hasn't damaged it. Or we just keep heading on. Okay, so all this junk is from the company store. Just junk, you know. The miners will buy it and use it to decorate the place or as landmarks. Ah! I can figure out whether I'm going in circles or not. Which I'm going to guess we are because everything appears to be a bit of a horrific nightmare. So let's just check there's nothing on this track before we move to uh, Pendulum and Casket or Bat Feeder and Scarecrow. Instead, continue on this path. Because I can't help but notice on this path, we're going up. Now if we're underground and trying to be not underground, uh, that's a good starting point right flipping there. So let's, uh, let's start with that nonsense and see where it goes. Here we go, we've got... this looks like lights. Well, this is, this is an exit. This is an exit with no, I mean, that's where we wanted to go, isn't it? Um, okay. If I click here, so uh, let's go. Now that's, so the answer was to do nothing. Is that a metaphor? I don't know if that's a metaphor. Okay, remember, the answer is to do literally nothing. Maybe that was randomly generated. Because if you just go straight on and don't go poking around, uh, then you just find the exit. So you don't actually need to use the, the turntable at all. So that's... Well, now I want to see what's on the other paths. Because, you know, video games always go the right direction last. I mean, this is leading me deeper and deeper underground. So, uh, logically, yes. Dead end uh, right here. Do you hear that? Kind of like a muffled rumbling... Could be water. Could be dead people and ghosts. Normally in this game it's dead people or ghosts. Oh, hello. Okay. I found something a bit different. So I went down, yeah, one of the other branches, the final branch, and I found a stage. So it's almost totally intact. I thought it would have been destroyed. Okay. Where are we? A recording studio. Kind of thrown together, but... A couple of folk music archivists spent time here recording miners' songs. Really academic ivory tower types. None of the miners really talk to them much. Okay, that's fascinating. I came here with my parents once or twice. They used to play music here, even when the archivists weren't around. 
It was a nice setup, kind of rickety, kind of dangerous, I guess, but I don't know, uh, had a good energy. Okay, so that's fascinating. And yeah, there's, there's some form of light in the background, even without my lamp on. There's a source of light somewhere, but we can't go any further. So, okay, back the other way, the one place we haven't been yet. And we've got a dead end with a, a dusty tape player. Loaded with tape staffed for power. Okay, plug it into your thing. We might be able to get that thing going, right? I mean... Okay, now there's... Now there's a thing happening. This is all... Well, this is terrifying. So if I... Sorry, if I was... If I turn the... If I turn the lamp off, then that means there's enough power to... But the lamp was... The lamp's not drawing power, because unless this is a different lamp that's not the lamp I had a, a moment ago, but yes, what was the terrifying nightmare noise? So, uh, yeah, they'd record on the scaffolding, and I guess then they'd keep themselves down here to listen to the songs. Right, so what happened to, to them? They got out, when the flood came, they left. And Jess, if we just... If we turn off the light then the nightmare song plays. So let's let's not do that anymore, because in general it's the stuff of nightmares, though. It's curious they were able to get out, but no one else was. Okay, modestly suspicious there. Ooh, except, okay, she doesn't want to go. She wants to take a look at that tunnel where the tracks were broken. Which one? Do you mean the one with, like, the, um, the tape player? So... Yeah, okay, there's... Oh, hang on. So, if you wait for me here, I'll go take another look. That's Shannon speaking. Or I can say, do what you need, I'll wait for you here. Okay, it's more polite if Shannon offers to go by herself. So, I'm assuming I'm now playing as Shannon. I don't approve of this. I mean, the alternative would have been nicer if we just, like, you know, hadn't come back down here. We could have just, you know, got the information we needed uh, last time, because now now it's even creepier. Now there's a pile of helmets, okay? That's creepy. And? Meanwhile, where the dog is... Conway, is that you? Because was this... Was this where he works? He promised he'd wait for her, but, like, he hasn't. Um... Okay, she found a pile of, you know, helmets and possibly skulls, who flipping knows. Um, and there's a shack here. And we have also got a handful of notebooks. So, uh, red one is J Marquez, uh, green one is uh, R Marquez, and the blue one is uh, unlabeled. Possibly, wait, was Weaver, was Weaver Weaver Marquez? I don't know, but, okay, this is all... Interesting. Or maybe Shannon Marquez, if Shannon was also a Marquez. I don't know. Red one, J Marquez. And, oh, she's... She's here now. Okay. Hi. Are you going to be upset by the fact I've just opened, like, some diaries? Or possibly because you've just found a giant pile of skulls. So, okay. J Marquez uh, scribbled vertically into margins. Uh, okay, bit of a messy notebook. Lined more evenly, divided into charts, correlating seasons, uh, lyrics, harmonies. Okay, so yeah, the Marquez family were doing all this documentation. So, uh, open green. Delicately rendered drawings. So, portraits of rugged faces. Alright, and a few drawings of a young girl in a miner's helmet. Right, so, uh, children were maybe working in this mine. And finally, the blue one. Greek letters and cryptic mathematical formulas. Near the back of the book. What first looks like it might be, uh, I'm guessing... Oh, yeah. Shannon's here. So, okay. Yes, the notebooks are labelled Marquez. And no, Weaver's parents are the archivists. My parents were miners. Not sure I believe her. There was a suspicious dot, dot, dot. I can walk, but apparently it's a bit on the, uh, the slow side. I'm trying to get too far ahead of you. You don't mind me hitching a ride, do you? I kind of got to get a lift out of here. I wasn't sure if, uh, or when 
I'd be heading back. I can drive. Yeah, that's fine, but we haven't found the bloody on-ramp yet, because it's still just a weird pile of scaffolding, and I can't drive my truck into a mine. If she sent you to find the on-ramp, then this is where you should be looking. Or maybe you just weren't listening closely enough, and that's not precisely what she said. Though I don't know. I saw Weaver at my workshop, that's up north by Lake Nolan, right at Wax and Paonia, in the back of the bait shop. Pretty glamorous, these are the times we live in. What's going on here? Because apparently we need to go back to her for more information because uh, she's a bit, you know, vague and mysterious. So either back to where she was uh, or to the new place. Well, probably the new place then because uh, she literally disappeared from her house while I was there. And I did have a bit of a funny turn when I started, you know, seeing through the walls and whatever. So, uh, okay. Wax and Paonia. Now, the problem I've got here is, yeah, the main routes are now signed, but Wax and Paonia... No. No, they're not. So maybe head back towards uh, town. I'm on a Hardyville right now. Dixie Highway. L and N Turnpike Road. Uh, I mean, I guess we're looking for these streets, she mentioned. Then again, we know that the house is down over here. So presumably, it's going to be vaguely close by to that, right? And... Dragonflies. Okay, so there's a bunch of different signs. You can't just, like, you know, figure out where you're supposed to go ahead of time just by looking for things that are obviously signs, because uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, other stuff dotted about. I guess we're going to the farmhouse for now, then. Okay, two people. The people who were rocking out earlier seem to have gone missing, so... Oh, I'm very slow these days. This is going to take me a bloody while to climb this hill. Okay, the house is here, and uh, there does appear to be, like, you know, no lack of wall. The wall is present, though, uh, yeah, no sign of your cousin or whatever. And I'm guessing the walls might be about to do a bit of a wibble, and I'm about to, you know, see those horses again. Yeah, okay, possibly this just represents me looking out the window, because uh, there is a window there, but then why the, um, the spider's webs? So, okay, there's moss growing out of this TV. That's unusual. Got a few spares in my bag here. So, she's just fixing this old, like, CRT monitor or whatever. And are you seeing anything that looks dangerous? Bit to the left. I don't know what I'm saying, but okay. Contacts are dirty. Don't go telling my old customers. I clean off the old vacuum tubes with spit. Just got to turn it north, south, and... Once again, you're not looking at the TV, are you? You're looking at the... Uh-oh. The TV's broken reality. Oh, bloody hell, Shannon. You've knackered the signal of the universe. Look, the barn was fine a second ago. Now you've cocky ruined reality. Oh, and Blue stolen in the truck. Blue! Bad dog, you come back here with that truck, right the flip now. If you horses would like to stop her, I'd really appreciate it. And now, now bloody okay, my dog stole my truck and it's driven it into a hole in the universe created by bad TV signal. Well, isn't that just annoying whenever that happens? Bloody hell, damn it Blue, you said you were not going to steal the truck and drive it into a hole in reality again. But here we cocking are, you are not getting any treats tonight. So that's Act 1. Um, that was, that was the story of, of Act 1. Meaning if I wanted to, I could now go on to, uh, limits and demonstrations. So, uh, okay, that's the first chapter of Kentucky Route Zero, which, as I say, a lot of people put on, like, you know, their top games of the year. I'll admit, I'm confused. I mean, you know, it's got some fun writing and some fun characters. It's atmospheric and it is nice. It's actually got some, you know, actual gameplay to it in the sense of uh, navigating on the map. That's nice, though. I feel like, you know, within episode one, maybe we should have got more of a grip on what's actually, like, you know, going on in the world more than we did. Because I don't really know what the, um, the stakes are. All I know is I've been looking for a place and I don't know how to get there. And at the end of the episode... I'm still looking for a place, and I still don't know how to get there. It's just, now I've got a Shannon with me, and uh, I know things are weird. 
yeah, I'm not 100% convinced I'm on board with this. And I've got to bear in mind, you should be able to evaluate this game individually, chapter by chapter, because they did release it episodically. So the first episode should be strong enough to make you think, yes, in four months' time, when Act 2 comes out, I want to come back and play that. Then, like, in a year, Chapter 3. And then, at some point before the heat death of the universe, Chapters 4 and 5. Because, as I say, it took them seven years to make all of these episodes. So, yeah. Okay. I'm not convinced that's, like, you know, the strongest opening. If I'd played that back in 2013, I probably wouldn't have thought, yes, this is one I definitely want to complete. But then again, people were saying this was really damn good. Maybe it speaks to you more if, you know, you're culturally in line with this. This is very clearly a game about rural America and decline and decay and whatnot. Maybe if you are from an American region where that's a real thing that you and your family have lived through, the game might speak to you more. I don't know. Let me know if, like, you know, you're American and you're currently sobbing because this is so well observed and you get it so much. But I'm not 100% sure that I do. So... I'm going to leave that off there. This is Kentucky Route Zero. If you like your games, you know, narrative and slow and contemplation-y, and you know, you just want a point-and-click adventure that's got a good score and a good atmosphere, worth a look-see, not 100% sure it's doing it for me. So I'll leave this off here. Link in the description below, just in case it appeals to you a little bit more. Still, it is always nice to, you know, get to go and experience what other people absolutely flipping love. Other games from 2020 that I may have missed coming up scattered across the uh, coming weeks. So hopefully you're looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Kentucky Route Zero. Thank you very much and goodbye. Were we doing virtual reality or was that just like a metaphor for lesbian sex? And then he smacked me lightly across the face with the money. What? This is... Well, where is this going? What's happening? We're gonna buy a whole new bin and we're gonna write Brendan on it and we're gonna put him in it and toss it off the pier.